Scientifically speaking, sound is just waves of pressure transmitted through air or water or solid materials, and music is just those same vibrations, only arranged in very specific patterns. Now, barking dogs, jackhammers, and symphony orchestras are all really just vibrations, but I've never been overcome with emotion while listening to a jackhammer. So what is it about music that makes us feel so many feelings? To answer that, I want you to imagine a world without music. Don't be afraid, we'll only be here for a minute. So Steven Pinker says that compared to stuff like language and vision, music could vanish from our species and the rest of our lifestyle will be virtually unchanged. But it hasn't vanished, so what gives? There must be some evolutionary advantage to having music, right? Well, Pinker says no. Instead, he calls music auditory cheesecake. And what he means is we didn't evolve to love cheesecake specifically. Instead, our hungry ancestors learned to go nuts for anything sweet or high calorie. So cheesecake is nice, but it didn't drive our evolution. Music, he says, is more like a side effect of things like language, or sensing our surroundings, or responding to things like crying or growling. But not everyone agrees with the cheesecake idea. Music stimulates just about every region of our brain, even the reward pathways that crave things like drugs. Nobody has to teach babies to dance to a beat. They just do it. I bet nobody taught you what music sounds happy or sad. You just know. Let me show you what I mean. Some neuroscientists think that music shares the same fingerprints as human movement. I mean, think about the last time you found yourself tapping your foot to your favorite song or walking along to the beat in your headphones. That's music and movement together. So our human ancestors, they gained an evolutionary advantage over other species because they were so social. I mean, whether it's military marches or lullabies or even One Direction concerts, nothing binds people together quite like music. But how do we get to emotion from just simple vibrations? Talia Wheatley is a neuroscientist at Dartmouth College, and she recently did an amazingly cool experiment that suggests we might read emotion in music the same way we read emotion in human movement. So what she did was give people this really simple set of controls, and they would either create a little melody or an animation of a red bouncing ball. So using an emotion as a guide, half of those people created songs to match, and the other half made a little animation to match. All right, so what I'm gonna do is play you some simple little melodies, and I just want you to tell me what emotion comes to mind, all right? Exciting. Ooh, exciting. Yeah. Scattered. Disjunct. Youthful. Joyful. Sad. Happy. Pensive. The results were amazing. For each emotion they tested, the slider positions were the same for the melody as they were for the bouncing ball. Happy bouncing balls shared the same controls as happy music. Same with sad or angry or peaceful. Emotion in music and movement seem to use the same patterns. Now I know what you're thinking. This is just because of American pop cultural norms that have been reinforced in our society for centuries, right? Well, they did the same experiment in a culturally isolated village in Cambodia. They found out that the melodies and movements were almost exactly the same as the US. Here's the angry music from Dartmouth. And here's the angry music from Cambodia. Here's two peaceful animations from both groups. This may just be the tip of the iceberg when it comes to figuring out why music can create so many feelings, but it shows that motion and music go together beyond just dance moves. Just like we can sense sadness by watching someone walk, and we know a happy dance when we see it. Music seems to move us because we move. Our connection with music overlaps with movement because we're running different programs using the same hardware. And those programs are part of what makes it so great to be human.